Yo, what up? What's going on? What up, what up, what up? Get stuff going up in here. Zach, what it do, bro? Zach got that dually rolling, don't you? That got a bike going. He had a dually rolling. Mr. Mechanic. <laughs> got a bike going. Have you cleaned the carburetor out from the bike? She was ready to go. So what you did with the truck, Zach? What was wrong with the truck? Why I kept um cutting off other than you know you say he had to he changed the spark plugs and stuff What you said you did? Okay. But yeah, you got the doula rolling, got the bike going. So what's wrong? With the, what was wrong with the um the one ten? Zach. So yeah, man. So yeah, Zach, I see you got everything up and running. So how did it pull the trailer? So yeah, get some folks up in here. Can't post it. So what's everybody been up to? Everybody good? Gunpowder, what's up, bro? What's going on? Gunpowder. Hey, gunpowder. I got a um a question for everybody tonight. Kind of sort of what me and you was talking about the other day. Just I was had a question on um just had a question. I was gonna ask everybody what everybody thought about who's gonna be the next hot tie brand. Um, other than you know, J Concepts and Pro Line and Hot Race, because we got a couple of new tie brands out now. So I was gonna see who's gonna be the who everybody thought was gonna be the next hot tie brand because we got Jetco, Hot Race, Pro Circuit, um, Sismic Tires, and you got. Panther Tires, aka Pro Line J Concepts. 
So I was gonna see who who y'all think gonna be the next hot tie brand. Cause it just goes back to what my boy, me and my boy Gunpowder was talking about what last week. And um I know bro, a bunch of good ones out there now. So yeah. So gunpowder, if you wanna hey, if you wanna jump in, man, you know, I'm gonna throw this link up in here. Y'all can we can, can can we can um discuss this thing, you know, face to face. Copy the link. But yeah, but yeah, the question is, who do y'all think going to be the next hot tire brand? And also, is the 50% sponsorship worth it? Money wise, what you say, gunpowder? Money wise, not worth it. But at the level I'm at, I think I should just, just be humble. That's a good idea. That's a that's a good way to look at it. That's a good way to look at a gunpowder. Cause some help is better than no help. You know what I'm saying? So the question is tonight. Got two two questions. First question is to everybody, who's going to be the next hot tire brand? Because right now, on the market of tires, we have, um, we all know Proline, we all know J Concepts, we all know AKA, but we also have Lugs tires, we have Hot Race tires, have Pro Circuit tires, Seismic tires tires panther tires um and we got a few more um dp pro and on top of that chris jenkins what's up and on top of that question i was saying was um is the 50 percent sponsorship worth it is it worth it overall is it really worth it should they offer more or should it be really 50 percent 50 percent 50 percent off the your um retail price or should it be off of the um The, um not retail but um what's the other pricing how they go by it? it's another pricing how they go by it. retail and you got the um i'll think of it in a minute but yeah so that's the questions for tonight what's gonna be the next hot tie brand let's say other than um aka proline J concepts you got jetco and you got hot race which is doing really good um pro circuit and you got vp and then we got another brand called six mick tires and then you got panther tires you got aka pro line so who y'all think Who y'all think gonna be the next big hit? Fifty percent off. Chris said fifty percent off definitely helps, but with the twenty dollars shipping, it adds back on. Yeah, had to back up to close to full price. True, 
That's true, Chris. That's true. So what y'all think? So who's the next hot tie brand? Gunpowder, what you said? Six me jet oh, uh, jet co is big in a year it's big in Europe, but a lot of the competition out there. Jet co big in Europe, a lot of competition out there. Yeah, it is. So the Jet Co brand is a European brand for real. Gunpowder. But yeah, so that's the question. So Jetco is big overseas. Well, that's cool. You know, really the more brands we have to choose from, you know, it also it can make it where we can Kind of lower the price, you know what I'm saying? Gunpowder, what I run, I run um I run J Concepts, J Concepts tires. So so like I was saying, I was just trying to see what um Cause like I said, you got the jet code, then you got this another new company called Lugs, Lugs Racing, and they have like different tier of tires. Like they have where well, you can get a basher tire, and then you can get a practice tire. It's not then then you can go on up to your your race tire. It's all of them on different compounds of rubber. So so um. It's a lot to choose from. Like my boy Chris said, he's on Chris on AKA. So AKA has always been good. So so Chris, what was the, what's your AKA tie that you like so far, Chris? That you and Josh been running the most of. Uh, that pretty much work anywhere. Gunpowder, what um jet co tire you been running? That, that's pretty much been working, gunpowder. Yeah. Typo and grid down too. Oh yeah, Chris, man, we praying that them legs get better, Chris. I was at the track this weekend. They told him about about your legs and stuff, but we praying that God gonna touch them and get you back, or you can move around like you want to. In Jesus' name, Amen. But yeah, so Chris, you say you like the typos and the grid down twos. Gunpowder, what 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 you like in the jet coat um lineup, gunpowder? Medium soft. Okay, jet coat got a tire called the block. It's like a blockade, okay. And it pretty much work everywhere. Y'all hey, hit them thumbs up now. Hit them thumbs up. Hit that thumbs up. Now I need I need all the little help I can get. It's called a block in. 
Okay, Chris, what's your second go to? Jet Co. That's, I might pull up on here, see what. Um, see if I can do this. I don't know if I can do it or not. The catapults. Okay. Catapults are good. Again, got the double downs. Gridiron twos. Okay. Gunpowder like the zips. The zips are good. So the grid iron is more of a good all around tire grip. So like this weekend I was at the warehouse and the track was kind of like um since it was since it had rain you know it was, it was kind of moist but it was still kind of drying out so chris what would you went to on that type of surface would you went with a gridiron or or um catapult or zip or double down and gunpowder how was the um how was the track when you ran the, that block in from Jetco? It was dry. Yeah, Chris, the um the track was kind of it was kind of in between like slick and wet. It was like it was kind of sticky, but it was drying out, you know what I'm saying? But it seemed like most of the day it was it was that um that tacky wet, you know what I'm saying, feeling. Cause I ran some um I got there late because I was stuck in traffic getting up to Birmingham for like I only had an hour and 15 minute trip <laughs> end up being two hour trip a three hour trip for real because it was your bumper to bumper but it wasn't no it was it was like one accident and that was like halfway in the Birmingham up the um halfway to um Pelham but um but everybody else it wasn't no accident it just Bump of the bump, people. People was out. Okay, Chris, you say you go with the gridiron then. Cool, cool. But yeah, y'all. Like I said, I was just trying to get it, get some um, just some opinions on. There's a lot of new tire brands out. Um, so I, my question was, was what's gonna be the next hot, popular tire brand y'all think that's coming out? Um, like I said, we got. Um, we got this Lugs Racing. That's a new one. Got these Jet Co tires. Y'all already know about Hot Race. Then we got Pro Circuit. Then we got VP. We got um, Six Mick tires. Six Mick tires. That's more of a European brand. Then we still got Panther tires still hanging on in here. Then you know we got AKA Pro Line and J Con. So, um, Gunpowder, I'm I'm gonna see. I'm gonna I'm gonna see. I'm gonna see what um what Miyako is talking about. So I'm a, I'm gonna I'm gonna stick around and really get some in depth information on what how they're gonna do things and stuff. So, but it look it looked like it might be a, a option. The team is still gonna be JQ Racing, but we're just gonna run race. We're just gonna race 
the Miyako car, but it's still going to be JQ racing. So, but yeah, that's the question. And then the other question was, is the 50% sponsorship really worth it? Is it really worth it? Fat dad. <laughs> Hold on, let me put you up here. Hold on. <laughs> What's up, man? Yeah, that's fat daddy, baby. Fat daddy. Yeah, that's fat daddy. But yeah, man, like I say, man, my everything fat like, but my pockets. Hey, it's all good. That's how hey. We working on it. We're gonna get right. I know that man. I think those VP pros would probably be uh if we didn't run the AKA, we probably would try the VP Pro out of some of the ones you listed. Yeah, VP Pro, they good. They just, like I said, it's a. They just had that market. They they put them as the cheaper brand, but right, they work though. You know what I'm saying? I ain't ain't nobody really said they they don't work. You know what I'm saying? They, everybody just want to run. Hey, and that's right up my alley. Baller on the budget. If they working, hey, hey. Look, if they take a coupon, count me in. That's it. That too. A man, a man get a ton of my business. Yeah. Well, like I, I, say man, I, got, I got coupons for days for a man. Yeah. But yeah, I keep a few. Um, even being on the, on the um sponsorship, I got I got a couple of um gift certificates. You know what I'm saying? Just, yeah. just in case, there's a help out there a little bit much more. You know what I'm saying? Especially J Concepts and stuff. So, hey, I appreciate the prayers too. They working because look here, I already my I just went to the doctor visit for my checkup. Yeah, uh, you know he changed my pills around and told me I had to get all that fluid off, uh -huh. and I lost I lost 27 pounds of fluid. That's just, dude, that's a lot. Yeah, bro, just keep on and. Just keep doing what they tell you to do, man. And like I said, we praying for you. It's gonna they're gonna you're gonna get back back on your feet like you like you wanna be, like you used to be. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. I got to get back, brother. I got that little man, little man got to keep me around. That's it. And then you know, we still got some cutting up to do. You know what I'm saying? Oh yeah, I ain't done. Trust me. <laughs> I'm gonna laugh. Look, I'm gonna laugh when they throw the dirt on me. Hey, that's what that's what I'm talking about. Be around for a minute and some, you know what I'm saying? So, all right. So, so what kind of where I was going on my end with the with the tires? Yeah, the fifty percent is now when you get the, when you initially look at the tire order, the, the amount is lower, but then they always add you. Well, we got a minimum twenty or twenty five dollars shipping. Or whatever, just on the team order, right? So, so by the time you add it all up and add the shipping back, you really only about ten dollars cheaper than what if you would have bought them full price. So yeah, and that's, and that's another thing, man. Because like I said, they they take so that's the, fifty percent off in my book, right? I mean, every little bit do help. Every oh, exactly. It, it, yeah, I mean. Even if ten dollars off, it's hard to grab. I, I'm not. Don't take it the wrong way. I don't mean it that way. Exactly. But it's it's like if you're telling me I'm getting fifty percent off, give me fifty percent off. Right, because that's what I'm saying. Because they they'll tell you that okay, you get a fifty percent deal, but if if is it is it off the retail price or if it's or if it's, it's off the, um it's off full price. It's off full retail. Okay, or either off the um. The map, what that the other ones was like wholesale or map price. Yeah, map price, yeah. I think that's what I'm trying to think of. Map price, yeah. But map price is kind of more like wholesale, and you're not getting fifty percent off of map price. Mm -hmm. there, ain't, there ain't no way. So, I, know, yeah. I, bought, I bought AKA tires a long time before the sponsorship, and so it's uh -huh. what we get fifty percent now. We are. 50% sponsored with Josh, but it's not 50% full. And like I say, I'm not complaining because every dollar to me helps. Right. You know, I'm going to say baller on a budget. So $10 is $10, but I, I, I'm a firm believer. You say, give me 50%, give me 50%. That's, that's what I'm saying. Don't try to, you know, 
We if appreciate that be the case, if, if that be the case, then if you're only going to give me $10 off, tell me you're giving me 20% off. Yeah. Or what? Just, just be real with me. That's all I had to where real talk come from. Just be real with what you say. That's it. That's what I'm saying. A lot of time it do be off of, um, what's the gross pricing or something like that before they come up with a retail. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And net. You think, net. Yeah, yeah net. that's right. it. That's it. The net, yeah. So, um, like I say, if you if, if they say they're gonna give you fifty percent, then that's what that's what we expect. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, hey, let me, let me. I know we're talking about tires tonight, but I ran across talking with a few RC guys today, and we've been talking about. You know, we do a lot of the on road racing too. Yeah. And some of them guys are doing speed runs well over a hundred. And the drag racing cars are just so much torque. Uh, a lot of screws are backing out, and the pinion, the set screws backing out. Yeah. And you know, we all racers from way back. We know to use the Loctite. Right. But we, you can't put red on it because you'll never get the set screw back out. Yeah. Right. That's what I'm saying. So, yeah. All right. So these all guys have come across one that they that they they've been using on these. Um, on the speed run cars like the stuff over a hundred yeah they're going they're going to a thread locker orange and it so what it is it says it's three times stronger than blue close to a red but you can get it back out it won't strip the screw yeah well so, I, I done heard of some lock tight that uh dynasty what's up bro how you doing but yeah, I'd have heard of some yeah, some Loctite. They um sometimes people mix the red and the blue. We but used it, to do that in the in a Losi had one that was a purple. Yeah. Jersey. They they yeah, they, they done it for you. It was a red and a blue, and I like it, but now you can't find it. So you might have to go back to mixing it, you know. Well, yeah. I'm gonna try this orange. I ordered some today. So orange, one, yeah. orange Loctite. Yeah. I'm gonna look out for, them. but yeah, since there's a few more people in here, man, the question was the night was um, what's the next hot tie brand? Since we got we got this new new tie brand called Lux Racing, and then we got um another brand called Jetco Racing, Jetco Tires. We got Lux Tires, Jetco Tires, and then we already know about the Hot Race Tires, Pro Circuit Tires, Six Mick Tires. Panthers tires are still around, aka Pro Line, J Concepts. We all know those. But my question was, what's going to be the next, the next hot tire? And also on top of that, is the fifty percent sponsorship worth it? Really? Is it really worth it? So that's my two questions for tonight. We just, we just chopping it up, just seeing what everybody's opinion is on those two things, and um. Like I said, we got RC Jersey in here. Blue Crab, what's up, Blue Crab? You've been missing, man. Hey, I got I got a question, kind of to go along with the fifty percent. If yeah. if you've been a fifty percent for a while, what's the next step? Is it fifty percent and then full, or yeah. is there anything in between? It, yeah. Is there seventy five or sixty? You know, like I say, is is everybody fifty? Basically, mm -hmm. nothing. 50 and full or yeah. where does it go from 50 man a lot of times it just um in my case a lot of times it just be since you if you lower to a brand then you can you can negotiate like okay i've been with i've been with y'all for at least three years you know what i'm saying been running strong you know my 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 um my results are getting better you know um i gotta i gotta just for example, I got a YouTube channel that I'm, I'm promoting y'all stuff, and you know what I'm saying putting y'all out there to some of the, some of my friends and stuff I have on Facebook and on on YouTube. So, you know, I can't can I get bumped up to 65, 75%, you know what I'm saying? I'm talking what? About. Yeah, so it's like um sometimes you have to negotiate. It's just a negotiation, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I yep. guess it goes. It also probably goes to how much you bought. You know, if you've been fifty percent, but you bought yep. but a few, 
Yeah. You know, you ain't you ain't bought but you know six sets in three years time, which we know that ain't us. But I'm saying some yeah. people don't cry like we go, man. We go through. I wish I, I wish I had all the money back I spent on tires. Hey man, it be like that. And that like my boy um RC Jerry said, he, you know, be like you like we was talking about just minutes ago, VP Pro. That's that's another one that's yeah kind of under the radar, but they got pretty good stuff for real. You know what I'm saying? I know a lot of people say they copy a lot of other, you know, brands um patterns and yeah. stuff, but like I said, if if the price right and they working too, you can't you what you have to you be a fool not to run it. You know what I'm saying? Does that mean you tell yeah, you telling somebody they can't shop at Walmart or Kmart? Cause what Kmart copied Walmart? What would the difference? If you don't hate on them, that's what I'm saying. They got families to feed too. <laughs> GWT, what's up, man? But yeah, like I say, um, it's a what gun? Hold on, I'm gonna take this down. Put them. Blue Crab said, EKJ, what do you say about that new budget engine that Reds just came out with? What do you think about it? Blue Crab, talking about the um the 571. The 571 is um it's based on the scooter reel, but it's just an update of the um of the R5, R5R. So basically what they did is took the block and took the um the porting and all that stuff is they put it into a five port engine instead of having you know the seven port. So they just updated that Reds R5R and put all the um carburetor, the the back plate, all the button head, all that stuff that's on that scooter rear 721. They just put it on the R5R and made a 521, just a five port engine. So that's that's the um that's what's up with that engine, but um I should be getting one soon so y'all can see exactly what it, what it is. And it's, like I say, it should be good. It's, it goes, it's going to be worth it. If it's based off the Scooter Real 721s, yeah, that's going to be a good one to invest in. So, yeah. So, yeah, it's a five port. So, yeah. But, yeah, man. So, so Chris, y'all didn't um, feel like coming out this weekend? I know you had your, your appointments and stuff. We had all batteries charged and the car loaded. Yeah. And I didn't get any sleep Friday night. I woke up sick all night. And yeah. so Saturday morning, Josh woke up and like, we going? I said, son, I can't, I just can't make it. I didn't get an ounce of sleep, none Friday night. And yeah. I hated it because we was all charged and the car was already packed and ready to go. And I had to tell him we couldn't go. It just, I hated it because I had done told Preston we were coming. Yeah, Preston. And, yeah. yeah, we were we were loaded and ready, but Saturday morning it spurred a moment. I just, there was no way. I couldn't go. I didn't even go to Piper Sunday either. I still felt so bad Sunday. I didn't even go out there. Yeah, I understand. But yeah, Blue Crab, the Scooter Real, that Scooter Real line is, is tough. It's tough to beat. It's real tough to beat. Um, they running real close with the, with the OSs, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah, think about it. It's oh, a reasonable. You still running the Reds engine? Huh? Um, you still running Reds engine? Yeah, I'm still hanging on in now. Mm -hmm. I, I know I had seen the thing you done about the budget, a couple of the budget engines. So I didn't know if you were looking at swapping or or what. No, I ain't thinking about really swapping, but. It's a bunch of good engines out there. Like the ultimate brand, the ultimate engine is good. Um the um what's another good one? The flashpoint is basically OS based. Yeah, that, flash one, the OS. Yeah, that one's good. Um the FXs, they are good too. Um but the best budget right now is is that res the r5r in that 200 250 range you know what i'm saying really can't beat it um so the the engine that we're running in josh's car yeah is a nova rossi we run that the mito four it yeah, was ron drake's engine and it had to like adam had done the break in on it uh -huh. and put it put it in the box ready to go ready to bolt on and then they 
they done the deal with OS and they, they wasn't going to run Nova's anymore. So we bought it. Yeah. Well, y'all that have to be that that Yeah. That's made for, uh, that and the made it, for it, yeah. man. Cause the original engine we started on was the Nova Rossi, just the elite five, which is bottom. Of, you want to talk about budget engine. I think we gave, $110 for it shipped to the door. Yeah. So it just no power. I mean, it was, it, you know, it got him used to it. That was his first nitro. It got him used to it. Is he yeah. going to like it before I go buying four yeah. or $500 engines? I'm like, let's make sure you're going to enjoy it. Yeah. And, and then we realized real quick, well, we way underpowered. Yeah. Well, yeah, Jersey. Jer 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 yeah. That, that meat old four is a whole different animal. Yeah. Them Novas are hard to beat, man. Um, like my my boy Jerry said, yeah, the Novas are they they're good. I'm I'm sorry that they they got ran out of business, you know what I'm saying? So I don't know That's if it was just thing I hate. yeah. Now yeah. you can't get them. I mean, you can't find a plug. Right. You, you can't hardly get pipes no more. So yeah. What's out there, which is very little now. Yeah. And uh, so I don't know what we're going to swap to. This one's still got a ton of life, so we're going to run it till it blows. Yeah. Keep running it then. Like Jer my boy Jerry said that the Reds R5R, it can be finicky, especially if you got that that horizontal carb, the HX, the carb that's on the side instead of up top like they used to be. And see, that's why Reds went back to the to the high end needle on top instead of on that side because it was kind of finicky to tune. But this um this 521 engine has the carb the um high end needle back on top. All the scooter real lines got the the um high end needle back on top instead of on the horizontal on the side like they had. So that carb did make it kind of finicky to tune. So so yeah. But yeah man so yeah, like I said, yeah, Nova Rossi, it, it really everybody was kind of thrown off for a minute because they was they were the, the budget engine, the best ran running budget engine, engines out there. You know what I'm saying? So oh, feeling yeah. bad. We were loving them. Yeah. So um well, I would I would probably go to a I would probably move over to like a flashpoint or something OS if we swap something. Something in that line, you know. Uh, I know they got so many different ones. The Flashpoint got it, and then a couple of the other brands. It's all like, well, what is this? Well, that's an OS-based engine. <laughs> There's so many. Which one do you pick? I know, man. I mean, it just you just have to go with what you know. You know what I'm saying? What's been good for you down the years? You know what I'm saying? And um. Like right now, for a new guy right now, I would recommend that um that reds, that five twenty one because like I said, the high end needles back on top, it's a different carburetor. That scooter reader line, that scooter reel, seven twenty one scooter reel line of engines, which this um the five twenty one is based off of that. It's it's it'll be a good one. Um, yeah, I but, see he's. Um, he said, "Blue crabs are underpower, elite five. What? Something must have been wrong with that engine, man. Yeah. The, elite, the elite five is the bottom of the barrel as you can get. Now it, I, we didn't have the P five, we had the elite five, which is yeah. that's the lowest one you can get. A uh, Nova Rossi brand, yeah. And yeah. The Nova Rossi, the elite five was as low as you could get. Yeah. I mean, it was literally on the on Nova Rossi direct." Well, I bought it for like 109 and then he had five or ten percent off with a coupon code and then time it added to shipping back it was like one 110 112 to the door yeah I mean that's cheap yeah but yeah man what you say blue crab oh well luckily I was buying them up like hot case before they kind of announced it was going Okay, going out of business before the rumor started. 
Okay, some blue crab. You good? You got some Nova Rossi's over there, blue crab. Cool. Yeah. yeah. Oh, no, I love the engines. I just, we just, we didn't really have good luck with the Elite Five. Now that, yeah. like I say, the one we got now, no problem. Yeah. That that Mito that we got now is, I mean, yeah. It 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 would probably run a truggy because it's almost. I don't know if it's just the shortness of the warehouse, the small track, but it's almost. Guru, it's what's up, bro? Yeah. But it, yeah, you know, but yeah, like I said, Blue Crab, that 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 H, X C carb, the horizontal carb is it's just finicky, man. It's have to tune the reels. Take your, you got to really take your time with it. You know what I'm saying? Once you get it close, and uh, since I know the ones that I have are long, low end needles, so basically what I had to do is really tune the low end in first, get it smooth, and then go to the top end, and then just hit it just a little bit, cause all your power gonna be right there off the um probably. About a quarter turn, maybe a full turn past flush. Yep. You're gonna be just right, right, just right there. You know what I'm saying? So is that yeah, it, it's finicky, but once you get it and do it, then once you figure it out, like I had to, just take your time with it and get it. You you'll be you'll be right where you want to be. Green tips, what's up? Oh yeah. But yeah, but yeah, the night the question was. Like I was talking to Chris right here, just asking him what what's going to be the next hot tire brand. Like I said, we got Lugs Racing, this Lugs tires that just came out. We got Jetco tires that came out. Then we already know about you know hot race tires. Then we got Pro Circuit, Six Mick tires, Panther tires. Then you know AKA Pro Line, J Concepts, and then the VP. Why VP Pro? You know in the conversation that much you know what i'm saying like me and chris said it's it's a i know they say they copy a lot of people's you know designs and tire patterns and stuff but they work why they're not more in the why they so not as popular as the other brands you know what i'm saying so my thing was what's the next hot tire brand and also we was talking about um if the fit is the 50 percent sponsorship worth it so what y'all think about that what y'all think about those two things? But yeah. So Chris, when when the next race y'all think about going to? Uh probably either the next one at the warehouse or maybe RC3. See if they got I seen they they is the uh Rocket City Challenge coming up. Yeah. Uh, we'd like to make we done that one last year. I'd like to make that one. And I just seen a uh, Facebook page I joined yesterday for a one in Tennessee. The uh, it's called the RC Farm. Uh huh. Have you seen it? I it, it looked like a pretty good little track. Yeah. It, it's kind of like a. Uh, it's kind of like a. Uh, uh, it's not enclosed like AMS. It has a roof over it, yeah. but it's not. It's not fully enclosed. Kind of, kind of more like uh, what's that other one in Tennessee? Uh, I can't think of the name of it now. It's up toward Knoxville, up that way. Uh, the Rock R O C C K, and it ain't it one up there called the Rock? Yeah, in Tennessee. Yeah, the Rock. Yeah. It's like the Rock. Yeah. Blue it's Crab. Like yeah. Blue Crab. Um. You don't have to change out your seals, but um, if it's working for you and if, if it's saying, you know, real consistent with doing that, then yeah, keep doing it. But like I said, I just really took my time and just concentrate on that tune. And um, like I said, I had to really tune it kind of back and start with the low end instead of the high end and did it like that. And then once I got the low end real close, then I went back up to the high end. But um, Blue Crab, what you say about the tires? You said, I think. Every tie brand kind of does the copy thing. Yeah, a lot don't do do the copy thing. They just rename it. I know Joe, Jay Con Jason Rona said he he copied the um back in the day when they had the um the, the bow whole tie, the bow ties from Proline when Proline had yep. the bow ties back in the day. 
Rona said he he kind of co he copied that brand. That I think he I forgot what what name he named it, but he did say he they copied that because he's saying a lot of the races once they see something working, they want something that's similar to that. You know what I'm saying? Instead of something that's new that really don't they ain't really tried yet. But if you don't try something new, how'd you know that it wouldn't work? You know what I'm saying? So, but yeah, they do. They do. They look and see what the competitors got. Competitors got, and they um, they do try to make something like it to keep in the, you know, to keep up with the um, you got to keep up with the competition. You know what I'm saying, Chris? Absolutely. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Gotta stay on that grind. Got to, got to. But yeah, Gru, yeah, yeah. like Gru said, y'all, hey, y'all hit that thumbs up, share the page. Mm -hmm. That's right. But yeah. But um. So what you think about um, Chris? What you think about how was um? How you think Silver State and all that went? Did you did you did you catch any of those races? I did. I watched most of Silver State. Yeah. I was, uh, I, man, I, I mean, really not one way or the other on it. I, yeah. I thought it was pretty good. I, you know, I watched a lot of old Mark Santa Maria, put a lot of videos up with the walking around the track and doing his interviews and stuff. Those were pretty neat. Mm -hmm. But I, I was trying to follow to see where they were going to go with that. You know how they done that if the pros couldn't race 40 plus anymore, you had to do one or the other. Yeah. If you ran 40 plus, you couldn't run pro and vice versa. I thought, well, I didn't, I didn't, I mean, I kind of see both sides. Yeah. And that's another thing too, to go with the, like I said, if it's a 50 percent sponsorship, if it's, if it's worth it or not, but then we go to these races. If you do have one, or most of them be, you can't have like a chassis sponsor that may be, you know, whatever. Right. But um, well, hey, you got you got guys running, you got guys running now that's got chassis sponsors that don't run pro, right? Yeah. And so, so are they gonna make the rules in to where a chassis sponsor does that automatically kick you into pro? Because if so, I know a few people got to move up. Yeah, man. What's up, Marcus? But um, I don't, I don't, I don't really agree. With, I don't say the chassis sponsor makes you have to run pro. I also don't have a problem with, say, Adam Drake, if he wants to run pro and then get more track time. Well, I'm going to run 40 plus too. There's tons of people that do it that, that run – sportsman e-buggy and then turn around and run 40 plus e-buggy what's the difference hey y'all hit that thumbs up hit that thumbs up now it's team bp what's up but i don't like i said the race i just think it's up to your competition you your your speed you know where you're at you know yeah. then again on the flip side of that you know where you're at so you're gonna run where you're comfortable at like you can be sponsored and run sportsman or you know, open or pro, that what you want to do. Um, that's on you. But then again, I don't think we should be made to run, you know, a pro class or open class if you're sponsored. If you sponsor, then that just, if you get sponsored, that just, you know, that's a blessing to you. You know what I'm saying? That's just, yeah. you know, you just blessed to get that sponsor. But it don't, it don't, yeah. it should make you have to jump to the pro class or to the, you know, open class, you know what I'm saying? If that's not your level, you know. Well, now you know how I like to think about a lot of things. Some of it I overthink, but here's the reason I don't have a problem with it. Okay. And it, it ain't my race, so it don't mean, it. my thought don't mean a hill of beans one way or the other. But Adam, just we, I'm just using him because he's the one that got, you know, kind of put on the chopping block. If Adam Drake, he runs pro, right? He's a sponsor. He he helps build these cars. He's a pro driver. Right. All right. Is he not also over 40 years old? Why can't he run 40 plus? If, if, he, if he's better than most of them, then he's just in the A main. And 
whoever qualified behind him is just second and third. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's the way I look at it. Why can you tell the man, well, you can only run pro. You can't do 40 plus. Why? The man's 40 yep. something year old. Right. Hey, let him run. It. I believe. Got a now, point. I don't, I don't think he need to go down and run intermediate buggy. Yeah. But I don't see a problem with him running pro and 40 plus. Right. Yeah. Hey, 916 VP, if you want to jump in, uh, Blue Crab, I see you got a lot to say about this subject. Um, jump in, man. I'm going to put the link in the box. If y'all got something to say, just jump in. It'd be easier. But, um, but yeah, I don't think, um, well, see, the thing is, with Alan Drake running the 40 class, it just ain't, it's just not Drake getting the practice, getting the track time. It's the whole Mugen team that haven't run their main yet. And so if Adam go out with a certain tire or a certain setup, he's going to go back and tell his team, even down to the down to the unsponsored driver, hey, this setup is working. This is what it is out there right now. So I, it, he's helping I, the, whole, the whole Mugen team, not just him. That's the thing. You know what I'm saying? That's yeah. On the same token, though, don't you think whoever's second place right behind him, he – don't in 40 plus that yeah. I forget what they call the guy that's always right behind him. Uh, Shout out to Yeah. P, P Daddy or whatever his name was is always right behind him. I, I, he He's kind of a sponsored driver. He's on somebody's team too. So you think he ain't telling them? So yeah. what's up? What's up? What's up, 916? What's going on? No, man. Uh, I don't know. For me, I, like I said, I was I don't know if you read the comments, but I think uh to me, Chris Moran's a sandbag. Uh he should be running pro. He's his his shirt is sponsored from neck all the way down to his ankle. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You, you got sponsors all the way from your neck all the way to your ankles, bro. And you podium three times at PNB, you podium twice at Silver State and come fourth and one. Bro, how many times you have to win? Before you, before they say, "Yo, you have to go to pro because you, you know, I mean, you dominating over here." You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, because well, I mean, know, I know. some people might feel different. Don't get me wrong, but I, I, I see somebody dominating. You know what I'm yeah. talking about? Yeah. In the intermediate, not you know what I mean when he should be running pro. I know pro guys here in, in Northern California. They can run any media and be smoking these guys and be and be taking home trophies every every weekend if they wanted to. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, like but, you know, but they 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 you know they they run with their class and they run with their you know with with their thing you know what I mean? Yeah, Gunpowder said he don't care how many sponsors that you got, you know it's just about the, it's about how fast you are. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. But what I'm saying is that if you dominate three times over here, you yeah. got you brought home three trophies over here. You come over here, you brought two home two trophies home and a fourth place. You know you. You know, you know I me. Mean? Like, how, how much do you have to win before they, they say, "Yo, you sandbagger"? That's that's all. My, that's my question. How much do you have to win before they consider you sandbagger? Yeah, like I said, like for JQ Racing, like Jerry <laughs> just said. <clears throat> see, Greg the Gun, Greg the Gun, and he's a he's been podium just like like Paul Chipperillo from out there from from the West Coast and stuff. The guy that he's he's a he's an ex world champion, you know what I'm saying? And um he's running 40 plus. And then at Silver State, he since he couldn't run pro, I think he dropped down to intermediate, and I think he pulled him in intermediate, but but once he run pro, he he ain't got it, you know what I'm saying? So yeah, but you come down to the extra level and you dominate. Put, put like this: you podium in intermediate. You right there in the uh, lower A main or top B main. You know, you you see what I'm saying in, in the pros. So, you know, I I just don't I don't see it. You you know, you run up there at the lower A's or the top B's. Yeah. You know, speed, and you you going down to intermediate and and you're sponsored from head to toe. Come on, you know what I'm saying. Uh, you know, chassis sponsored to to everything, right? So, you know, I'm just saying, how much do you have to win before they say, "Yo, you what? Uh, you're just you're just too good. You're just dominating this class right here, and you are sponsored from head to toe." 
You know what I'm saying? They can't even fit it, you know, all the sponsors on your one t-shirt. They have to put it in the back or something. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. So, you know, I don't know. Just just that's just me. I I I'm, I'm I know nobody there's probably two sides to the story, but the wins proves it. You know, it's not like he he fought and struggled and you know, whatever. He's dominating right now in in the intermediate. So if I'm wrong, tell me I'm wrong. Tell me I'm wrong that he's not dominating. You know, when you podium all three classes, pretty much, in every big race, you know, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. I mean, that's that's a good way to think about it. But, but, then, but, again, you know, but then again, they yeah, may, tell me I'm they, wrong. Tell me I'm wrong. Tell me I'm they, wrong. I don't want to okay. hear. They may, they may be, ex, they may be ex pros, but then again, actually, he's never, he never went pro. They, 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 they might not put the time in like they, like they, like they usually when they did when they was on top of their game. You know what I'm saying? You had. No, but we talking about Chris Morant. He ain't no. Is he an ex pro? Morant, I, I don't know if he's an ex pro. Uh, but, I understand if you're an ex pro, you got old and you're not as fast. Okay, that's different. But if you're still dominating, where you're low A's and top B's, you yeah. know, you know what I'm saying. I understand if you just can't qualify no more. You're always in the C pro, pro C uh, in the C main. Then yeah, I can I can see that. But yeah. you know, you you know, but tell me I'm wrong. Tell me I'm wrong. I I, I just wanted to know. No, you ain't wrong because it's that's your that's your opinion about it. No, but what I'm saying is that when is it when is when is it considered sandbagging? Let me ask you that. When is it considered sandbagging? All three of you guys. Uh, what do you guys consider sandbagging? Because a lot of time when we go to those big races, like, you know, what you go ahead, Chris. What you think, Chris? Then I go in. Go ahead, Chris. What up, Jerry? On the sandbagging. Yeah, I think if if like somebody signs up in the sportsman. Uh -huh. uh, it, well, I mean, e e any of them, even the intermediate, if they go in there and sign up, well, I'm paying my money. I get to sign up which class I want. And yeah. you come out and you and you lapse ahead of the next club, yeah. the next guy behind you. Way ahead. They're going to make um, you bump up. They don't, though. That's the problem I have. Yeah, there's people they, that'll be they, in classes right. where they shouldn't be. You know, that's my main problem. Yeah. That's, that's when I say they should bump you up. Uh, I you agree. Know, like, like even like for our local track, they they try to tell you, well, we want to put out all everybody together uh -huh. and qualify, and then the first, the top half is going to be pro buggy, and the the bottom half is going to be sportsman, and then yeah. like sometimes if a guy wins one one day and all of a sudden he won by two laps, oh, you automatically got to go to pro. Uh, yeah. You you kicked out of sportsman, you can't. That's what what? He might have just got lucky that day and yeah. all of a sudden was hit. Yeah. Now, like, like if he does it, now, if he does that every week, then, yeah, it's time to move up. That's right. That's right. But then again, like people, like people don't, this, what I see, is. my biggest problem that I see now that I don't race and I watch Josh and I watch people from my day of racing – we just thought, hey, I'd rather be 10th in the A than third in the B. You, you know what I'm saying? It meant something to us to be in the higher Yeah. Rate. Yes. Yes. Now, now everybody wants to be, oh, no, I want to win the B. No, no. I don't look at it like that. I moved up because I got tired of all that and started racing against people who were way better than me just so I could get away from kind of the, the uh, friendly the friend system. Of people who were in classes, they should be. That's true too. That's true. So too. I figured I might as well swim with the sharks to be able to compete. You know, <laughs> yeah, get yeah. up there, then there's no excuse. You know, so yeah. yeah. Man. But that's just the new guy. What do you think, yeah. EKJ? If I dive, let's say if I, I me, I dominate PNB okay. all three classes, and I go to Silver State and I dominate all three classes. Is it? Am, am I considered sandbagging, or it's just it's it's cool? I think so. And, and, and no, and, and imagine that my my sponsor come from my neck all the way down to my toes <laughs> uh, as far as sponsor list, right? Yeah, I got you. you know, be, no, you know, am I sandbagging or it's cool like that? Because I just need to know. Uh, so that way, when I get to that level, if I do one day, 
I'm going to say, yo, everybody said it's cool. I don't need to race pro. You see, the thing is, the thing is. No, let's just be straight up. Don't be saying it. Just tell it how it is. Tell it how it is. Tell it how it is. Straight up. Okay, okay, we're going to cover it. We're going to go for the sponsorship thing. A lot, um, of the, a lot of the sponsorship, hold on now. A lot of the sponsorship stuff. Okay, but of, we lot, hold, on, hold on now. Hold on. You got to hear me now. All right. Well, we get to the sandbag. We're going to get right. to the sandbag. <laughs> but a lot, a lot of the sponsorship stuff, man, is about who you know. It ain't really about that's right. Uh, how really good you are, unless you do put up, you know, unless you do. Yeah, good, yeah, yeah, yeah. I get that. I get that. I get okay, that. we got that. Okay, we got that sponsorship part. So all the sponsorship from the head, from your neck I, down I, to your toes. Yeah. Take them off the table. Okay. Okay. Off the table. All right. Okay. Off the table. All right. Okay. Now, if you are dominating like that, then yeah, you need to prove. You need to move up. But then so again, I'm so the sandbagging. I was considered yeah, yeah. sandbagging. But. You are sandbagging, but the race. <laughs> this well, hold there. on, now. hold on. Your race announcers got to look at those, t- look at your times, and be like, "This guy doing this, doing that. We are gonna bump him up." That's right. Uh, well, I, I went to Silverstone. I talked to the guys, and the truth is, they that's told that's that's me that's that's I can sign up. You got to no, look what at what I'm saying. What I'm times and look at them times and see what's really I, going on. You know what I'm saying? And and a yeah. lot of that. And like what Blue Crab said, a lot of that butter system, it also be yes. it goes up to the, the race announcers and they know they know who's who. Yeah, you know, it's Chris, discouraging for the new guy. You know, Chris, no, Chris, no. Chris can tell Chris know Chris know that butter system. He know no race announcers know what guys are doing what and what race. No, no, yeah. no. I'm I'm telling you, I was there. I was there at Silver State. I asked him, I said, Hey. Yeah. If I wanted to, can I sign up for pro? He said, sure. You ain't going to make it into the A or B, man, but you'll be at the bottom, man. You could race pro. Ain't nobody going to kick you out, say you're too slow, <laughs> and you got to go down to sportsman. Uh, if you sign up for pro, you'll be racing pro. So there's no kicking people out. So I, and, one, and I was going to do it just to do it because, you know, I could say, hey, I ran pro while you ran intermediate or, or sportsman. But what I'm saying is that that they don't kick you out. These, these big events, they don't care. You know what I mean? You want to sign pro? Go ahead. You be at the bottom, bottom, but you ain't gonna you you ain't gonna make it to the A or B main, and 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 that's just how it is. You know what I mean? If you're local and they're just saying, hey, maybe different because it's more personal. But when you're at a big event, they don't care. You know what I mean? Just pay your fees. What they care about? Yeah. And we um, and with the Adam Drake situation, is Drake he's his he's his he's running his age group, which is. I think he's the focal point in the whole problem. But yeah, but it is with him it's kind of different because his speed is, is is definitely on the pro level, but since his age group is 40, that's why he can run, drop down and run with the 40 guys, you know what I'm saying? But uh-huh. even though that his speed is up to the pro level, you know what I'm saying? But that's but that reason just they just kicked him out of the 40 class now because of everybody was complaining about it, you know what I'm saying? So yeah. I just think so, he was the the, the most popular of, of the problems so that they focused on him. That's right. So, yeah. Well, I, I get that. But, you know, like I said, based on the time, I was looking at the time just to double, okay. just to see. Yeah. And he would qualify the lower A's to the upper B's or maybe yeah. the lower A's with his time. So to me, I'm just like, you know, one, you, you, it's a fluke at PNB. Okay, I get it. But yeah. I, when I seen it at a at a at Silverstone, I'm like, yo, I don't get that now. I don't get that. You know what I mean? There's and, a lot of competition there. Yeah. Yes. It is. Yeah. And like I said, and, and you podium yeah. five out of six. You know, and fourth on one of them, the one that you didn't podium, you came in fourth. You know, yeah. you you right there. You yeah. know, I got you know, like I said, I, I got a local local couple of local guys like CJ, uh, yeah. um, Kyle Turner. They could they can go down to in the media and dominate. Right. You know, right. Kyle, no, Kyle Turner, he, to me, he's he's hella fast, right? And he, he qualified in the B main, uh, yeah. you know, second in the B main in oh, the pros. Yeah. But if he wanted to, if he wanted to chase a trophy, he would have went down and sandbag and said, yeah. I'm gonna go into media, and he would have got one. Would have got one, yeah. But you see, know that's, what I'm saying? That's your goal. That's that's your goals, your your personality, what you want. No, but what you I'm saying is that you don't run in that lower line. You don't run in that 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 lower um that lower group like that. If you know that you want to be one of the best of the best, you are gonna go 
It's not what it you know, of course, of okay. course, of course. You know what I mean? But for me, I just want to know if it is it cool for me to do what Chris Chris McMahon is doing. I'm not blowing them out there. Like, yeah, I, I hate them on that. I don't know nothing. I don't know no known personally. I just felt like you know yeah. he should be stepping up to pro because he's dominating the intermediate. You know, it's the same thing as if it was Chris. If Chris Nelson was dominating the intermediate, I'm like, yo, you have to step up to the pro. You know, you can't <laughs> be. You know, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. I feel you though. It makes sense. It makes perfect sense. Yeah. I think it's you know, it takes people calling them out to do it. You know, and I, I went to the my race last night and uh, it wasn't last night, say Saturday. And you know, I, I came in third, but the in sports bid, but the thing is the first and second guy, the first guy, he he lapped me like two laps. The guy uh, that came in second lapped me a lap, and yeah. I came in third, right? I'm just like, you know. These guys are pretty good right here. It's going, you know, I got, I'm, I'm down two laps to try to try to at least try to get a first place. So now I know that when I'm out here racing, I got I got to be two laps. Uh, I got, I'm two laps slower. So I, you know, uh, I don't know. You know, to me, it's just like you know, race. With, you know, I mean, there's no competition if you're lapping people two times. Like, yo, how is that the competition? You, the sport. You, yeah, where's the sport? Right, at? We're, gonna, we're gonna answer. Let's answer um, Jerry's question right here. He was saying. He said he knew the racing. He said, what was the reason to have a 40-plus class was the age is a big factor in racing over the years. Well, yeah, the 40-plus class is... That mayo. They, they say that when you turn 40, you get slow. Well, I'm which, about to be 40, sir. So they, they made, a, uh, made a class for... Young bucks. For, yeah, <laughs> for, for, for that money. money. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Nine sixteen true is a money class. It is about the money too. But they say once you once you turn forty, that's kind of like below. You know, you score than the, the pros. But that's not true though. No, that's not true. But I tell you um, one thing. I, I tell you one thing. I didn't hurt when I was forty. You know. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, Basically. look, I know, I know when I was a kid, all I ate was Rice Krispies because all I do now. Snap, crackle, and pop, pop. <laughs> I'll break that with yeah. you on that one, too. Body wearing out too quick. Mm. Right. And like what Isaac said, he said, you know, Drake proved that wrong, that, that age don't matter. It's just your priorities. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? If you want to practice and stay on top of the game, you, you can do that at whatever I mean, age. Available to him. I don't see him doing that wrong. You know what I mean? If, if <laughs> to me, I think it's the... The, the interest, you know, the interest in, in racing right. at age 40. Because, you know, you got a lot of things. You probably got kids, grandkids. Yeah. You know, some yeah. people have grandkids at 40. You know what I'm right. talking about? Yeah. 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 True. You know, you know, for me. You know yeah. Adam, Drake, Adam Drake, that's his job. He's he doing it, you know, he's he's the engineer, and he raced probably 24-7. So, it's you know. It's all race engineer. Yeah. The director. So, so that's company. what he does. But once it's you get to a certain point, you know. Right, nine sixteen. You're right. It's about your priorities and stuff. Yeah, what, priorities. You know, and then, uh, when, you know, certain to a certain point, you realize that you're just racing toy cars. You know, I know people yeah. hate the word toy cars, but it, it really hobby. is. Uh, you yeah. know, and you know, you get to a certain point that it, it is. You know, and then your priorities start to change. You know, the interest, right. the love for the thing, or you got, you know. I ain't um, that none. Yeah, like I was telling my my buddies. Over, over fish, man. Yeah. Yeah. Well, like I was telling my buddies, this, this is this is the truth. I don't know if you can relate to this. Like you know, back then as kids or teenagers, you know, those people that I was gonna ride and die with, uh, yeah. you know, take a bullet for them. They'll take a bullet for me. But now that I'm at this age, thirty nine, and they thirty nine, you know, it's different now because they they're taking bullets for their kids, their other family members, their wives. They're not gonna be taking bullets for you like I would take a bullet for them. So. <laughs> The interest is like, you know, you, you think the interest in the RC change, you know what I mean? Of course. It has. You know. it, it does. But like I said, it's, see, RC, everybody forget, RC is not a physical sport like baseball. Football, you know what I'm saying? Basketball, you know? Yeah, it's yeah. Like a lot of RC is just, it's really a lot of it more, not it's, a luxury. It's, so real, it's, it's mental, you know what I'm saying? And then you do have to, you know, the more you practice your skills, it's a lot of muscle memory in it. You know what I'm saying? Once you get your skills and get everything, if you keep it up, yeah, well, it shouldn't be no no ceiling on, especially the eighth level. You know, what I'm saying? Get better and better and better. <laughs> For real, it's it's like, up free, free yeah. yeah. So, I know, let me ask you this. I got another question too. Um, 
you know, I, you know, I've been, I got three tracks around me, and uh, you know, most of the time I don't qualify in the A, man. I'll be in the B because I, you know, I'm still new at this and learning. And most of the time, the B mains are about ten minutes to, you know, uh, ten minutes um, main. If you're in the B main, in the A main, you get fifteen minutes, or, or, or you know, sometimes twenty. A club uh, race. There's a club race. Yeah, at the club race. And do you, uh, you know, and I feel like being out here, you know, at first I only had, I just bought the electric buggy to, to get some more time. But at first I only had the, the nitro buggy. Yeah. And I just felt like it wasn't worth it, man. I'm, you know, it being that it's new, you know, I love the hobby. So I'm out there and I'm going to be out there anyways. But for somebody that's new, uh, you know, you, you go out there. I've been out there since nine. I drove two and a half hours, get there at nine, you know, set up. A little open practice for a few hours. We get the qualifying, and two qualif two qualifying, which is five minutes qualifying, and then and then I get to the A main, uh, to the B main, to the mains, which it was just B at ten minutes. So, what I'm saying is that I was there all day, from from nine o'clock, and we didn't leave to like eight nine o'clock at night. Yeah, you know, for ten minutes of racing, you know, that's like my only gripe about the racing right now. It's just, it's not, to me, it's almost not worth it. Like, man, I, I could spend 10 minutes in the front yard and, and get just as much fun. You know what I'm saying? Or even more, I can be on the front yard and draw for 30 minutes, a half hour, and be cool and be satisfied. You know, I'm out there all day and I get 10 minutes of main time. You know what I mean? Well, it's it's right right ain't, ain't nothing more fun than putting Corey in the wall now. <laughs> yeah, there you go, KJ. Put that in the wall. Hey, man. Put that in the wall a couple of times, but uh, but yeah, it just it go back to your race. Your that's on your race director, and they race format, man. Yeah, yeah. Do you, what do you think is a, a good time? A good like uh, like any main or uh, the lowest minutes of of, of a main for nitro? Well, like what do you think? The lowest. Minutes for like, for, main, for like a B main or something like that, or C main, yeah, B main and below, you know, me and C main because you know, people mm. go out there and spend all day, you know, it's different. That's like, a, he, he on the, the, the go ahead, Chris, you gonna say something? Go ahead, then I, say I said, something. I said 15, yeah, 15 good, a good run time for like a lower main, like a B, C, D main, yeah, I, think, yeah. I, say, I say 15 minimum. The that nitro main in the C D it don't it, well, to me fifteen minimum. The guy's yeah. got to get experience with the longer run time though. That's the only reason I say at least thirty. So that way there's a couple of fuels and stuff like that for the less. Well, more, if, if you make it to the A main, I, I get that. You know what I mean? Well, forty five for the A, yeah. But the lower main, you know, they should get a, a, a decent amount of time because you know, ten minutes. Stop. Yeah, ten, yeah, ten minutes. You get one fuel stop, and you know, really. You, really, you, you know, it's like it's not even worth it. Like, yeah, I've been there all oh, yeah. day and Look I got 10 minutes. And if I flipped over twice, you don't have enough time to crop to, to fight yeah. back. You know you what I'm talking about? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's over. You know what I mean? It's over. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, it's like I said, it depends on the race director, how they set up the race. Because you can do, I mean, you can do heads up racing. You can have six, seven men, um, seven minute qualifiers and then. You can break it down to having like your main A B main, like I say, it'd be 15 minutes and your A main to be, you know, 30 minutes. It's depending on it depends on your entries too. You know what I'm saying? That's yeah, that's, yeah, yeah, yeah. I get I that. Too yeah. many people. Your entries, yeah, your entries depend on uh you know how long the time is in between races and stuff like that. So that plays a factor in it too. And then it's it's it's, it's just the way how they run the races and bigger races here, especially on the, on the east, on the east coast over here, southeast of the east coast. You know, we we have like a staging area where you the next race always had their cars ready about to hit the track while another race is going. So it's it's a constant, you know what I'm saying, going, going, going. But once you get up to 700 entries and stuff like that, that's just oh, yeah, 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 yeah. a long day. So it's good to have two cars, two classes to run in. You know what I'm saying? So. Well, I picked up an electric buggy because I felt like, you know, the two big races I went to, I went to D, uh, the, 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 the Nitro Challenge, and then I went to Silver State. Wait, and being that I was in one class, man, the wait, the in-between time was, I, I can't even know, it was like five five hours, six hours yeah, in-between time yeah. for a five-minute practice. You know what I'm saying? And oh, yeah. 
Yeah. Welcome to P and B. No. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's ways they can do that, man. Like, especially like for practice, they can make practice heat sheets where you'll know exactly when you're up. So it won't be no line. So you run your practice could be yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. a five or six minute practice session. If they do heat sheets and stuff like that, they will let you know exactly when you're going to be up. And then I mean, that, even though you, if, even in the race format, if they have a schedule, if they do a schedule, you will know, OK, I'm going to be up at at on uh, three thirty. So I ain't got to get up. You know, so I ain't got to get out to bed to like 10 or something. You know what I'm saying? Because you you have a schedule. You'll know my especially after after the practice session is over. They can make a schedule where you'll know, OK. Now, you know, BP, your race is going to be up, but like I said, around about 3.30 the next day. Your first qualifier is going to be at 3.30. So there, if the people that love die hard races, they can be at the track all day, but somebody just want to go in, do what they got to do, go sightseeing or whatever, or whatever they need to do, they can do that and be back at 3.30 before they qualify or whatever. You know what I'm saying? So it's on the race director, man, as far as the race format-wise. You know what I'm saying? So that's just how it is, bro. And like I said, with the sandbagging thing, like here on the West Coast, on the East Coast, so much you can do. Yeah. yeah, the sandbagging thing on the East Coast, if they look at the times and see how we do it on here, over here, VP, it's just, if they see a guy that's extraordinary or faster or they can go up in the pro level, they'll bump them up automatically. You know what I'm saying? The race wreck to do it automatically. So that's how we do it over here. But I don't, I don't know if they, they yeah. do it over here. I, I don't, you yeah. know what I mean? You know, if they do, it'd be great. It'd be great, you know what I mean, to keep it fair or keep it more competitive, you know what I mean? If you're just out there lapping people, you know, lapping people, like, yo, you know what I mean? You in the wrong class, bro. You supposed to be, you know, with the experts or open class, you know what I mean? Hey, y'all hit that thumbs up. Y'all, 16 people in here, y'all hit that thumbs up now. Hit the thumbs That's up. That's the Elite Five he was talking about. Chris, that is Chris. What's that? Elite Five, yes, sir. Yeah, man, it's been a jam up motor. It's the same one. Yeah, I love it. Yeah. Just, just out of curiosity. What's up, Hot Rod? Sixty-seven in here. But yeah, but well, we got kind of a smaller track. Our home track is not very, very long. Uh -huh. A lot of corners, so it is, it is pretty good on the bottom end. Most. Of it. I guess Chris jumped out, but yeah. But yeah, um, Blue Crab, how y'all do it down at um, down at um? Well, we had to cancel our Roar race, um, yeah. which was a week ago, I think it was. Um, we had to close yeah. down with rain. Down at so Field Hurt, we got our state race to be coming up. We actually have Drake coming in for our state race to do a clinic. Okay, um, pretty excited about that. Um. That's about it. The state race is kind of my one of my biggest races of the year, in my opinion, because that's the race I started on a few years ago. So it's the most important one to me. I I enjoy it. JB, we seem to have a big crowd too. So yeah, yeah. So what they um, so how do y'all do? If y'all we're, we're about to do another track rebuild. Oh, I feel hurt by doing another track rebuild. Mm -hmm. We do. I think we do it what two or three times a year. Which is a big undertaking, you know how that is. You know they had the tractors and all. Bobby Moore come and and build us a track. Yeah, so, a cool. lot of work and a lot of time, and a lot of people don't show up to volunteer. So it just turns out to be more work on the people who do show up. Who show up? Yeah, yeah. So, but not everybody is lucky as I am to be five minutes down the road. So, yeah, be fair. So, but pretty excited. We've had a pretty good season so far. I didn't do so great in the point season because I ended up having to miss a few. But you know, do what you can do. You know. Yeah, that's it. Because a lot of those point races like that, a lot of the series, the point races is the main thing is if you, you got to make all the races. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah you, most definitely. If most you definitely. make all the races, then you you be in the in the running. You know what I'm saying for the championship. Oh, yeah. You know, points races. So. Well, they also yeah. had that. Um, we're, we're doing something new. Uh, a series between us and Loganville. I don't know if you're familiar with Loganville. Uh, yep. It's like the bottom right hand side of Georgia, but it's a series that they're doing, and you got to attend all the races. You know how that goes. And I was wanting to do it, but I don't think I'm gonna be able to. You know, business yeah. hadn't picked up after COVID like I hoped it would. You know. Uh huh. 
Hey, you got that flexi cap. Oh man, I got every motor I got's got flexi caps on it. I love them. <laughs> I love them, man. Yeah. Do they fit do they fit most of the motors? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they damn near got a color for every motor too, you know. I'm a big color person. I like to have my, my buggy and my, my truck looking all colored out, you know. How does that uh, uh like let's say you're checking temperature, how does that um does don't that it, it, it doesn't do, like no, no, no meaning like like won't give you a a, a a solid number if you put one of those things that temperature gauge in No. I mean you're checking it on the glow plug anyways and it it's it doesn't raise the temperature or hamper it from cooling. What I'm calling? It's only got it at the right at the top, you know. Yeah. See how, mm -hmm. see how the inside well, I'm trying to find where the camera is. See how the inside is wide open? Yeah, yeah, I see it. But I mean people wanna buy a used motor, they wanna buy a pretty top to that used motor. They see it all beat the hell and back, they don't wanna buy it. Yeah. No, I, I, I don't got like mine looking up either. I like my stuff to be looking pretty for all the money we pay for it. True. You gotta put a good tie on it though, because if you take a bad spill, it will come off. Oh yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. That's why I'm holding back on uh on breaking in a lot of motors because I just don't want to break them in because I still got motors I still got to run through. Why would I yeah. need to break all these motors in? You know, I'm I just, you know, I'm just gonna run them at, at, as soon as they wear out. I'm gonna put a new one in after that. You know, uh, you know right. yeah. But some people like to have, a, you know, like to run a lot of motors, and that's cool and switch them around. I don't know. For me, I'm happy with a motor. I'm gonna run it till. So it dies, and then I'll put a new motor in. Or unless right. I didn't like it, but I put it yes, in, and I yeah. didn't like it. Then it would be that would be the only reason why it would be used because I, I used it and it didn't. I didn't like it. Right. Then it was right. used. But if it was good, you know, I, I'm just gonna keep running with it. I got more than one. It's me and two other guys. So I have all these motors. It's, they're not. I'm not running them all. It's for me and my two other teammates. You know. Right. So like I say, it, it might look like I'll be running a bunch of motors, but in all actuality, I don't. You know. My yeah, favorite. You know about that, cool. Fat Dad, what you got over there? Oh, your shoe goo? <laughs> Miracle product. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, Blue Crab, yeah. you put the flexi cap and, and zip ties on, on the motor just to protect I do. I do because um, I fit this lens just right, it'll peel it off. And if the head isn't perfectly round, it'll let it come off. Okay. Like this Elite 5, it's, I mean, not Elite 5, but what is this? This is a BX3, actually. It's got that bat wing looking head on it at the top. It'll uh -huh. just come off, you know. But like the reds and stuff like that, you probably get away with not putting them on there. But, you know, you wreck and it comes off. You wreck again, you know, scratches it all the hell. So we spend so much money on these things. I try to take maximum care of them, you know. Yeah, ain't nothing wrong with that. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So yeah. But yeah, man. So who y'all um who y'all got who y'all top three for the for the nationals? Ooh, who, I think who, we're gonna be who, surprised. Fat Daddy, you go first, fat dad. Go first. Who you got top three? I ain't even thought about that one. I I don't know. I I think one of these days Lutz is gonna have to come in here and get something. I, I don't know if this is gonna be it, but I'd like for that to happen too. Yeah, he, he man, he's due for one. Yeah, because last big race Lutz won was that DXR race that was overseas when he beat um what's his name? Angaro. Yeah. That was the last and big I, race he won. He, he's won, so you know, lately. Um, so yeah, he did do. Hey, I'm gonna show you something cool I found. I always got to put my put my Mayfield and Drakes in there. So yeah. at least one of them. But y'all know y'all know Mayfield ain't made a, a um. Yeah, he'll he'll dominate. Yeah, a national main in in yeah. at least three years. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I see it. Man, I I bought a whole pack of these and I'm gonna put them on all my buggies for the battery, so that way you always know what the battery is. They're only like a couple. Well, hey. What's, up, cool, What's up? What's up, brother? I'll show y'all something that I do. It's another thing. If what you, you got, got Wayne? The flexi cap. Uh huh. I use the the fuel tube that I'm you okay. use for the regular fuel, and yeah. I cut it around and put it around the head yeah, and it that way. That'll save them too. Okay, use the fuel. Say how. Say it again, Wayne. See how you use the. You know, you got how you an use example? the fuel tube that goes for your fuel. Yeah, you to the it crap. Right down the middle. And it'll go around your. Let me flip this around so you can see on mine. Okay. 
Give me just a second. Very loud. Now, I don't know. You can flip it around on the phone. Yeah, you can. Yeah, on the phone. Yeah. There you go. Oh, okay. There you go. Look at that thing. Okay. Yeah, that's a million dollar motor right there. Oh yeah, yeah. I've seen that. I just like the colors, man. I'm a, uh, I'm a fan. I know. Of it. It's something different. But that yep. works just as good, though. Yeah. So you do that. Yeah. It's all done. See. That's my picture. There was some of the million dollar motors and buggies you got over there. I know why I ain't got them over there. One. There's my electric. Oh, that's a pretty paint job on there. The orange, yeah. Yeah, I like that. I'm trying to step up my airbrush game. It's hard. I painted <laughs> that with uh, um, rattle can. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. Wayne got some skills over there. Yeah, that looks good, man. That's, that's, <laughs> that's, that's, <laughs> I'm trying to get him on the track. <laughs> yeah, the rain. The rain's been messing us up. Wayne, where you from, Wayne? Where you from? I, I'm, I'm new to Nitro, guys, but between – and I don't know if y'all know these guys. Rob Isaac, which was with yeah. USRC, and Ryan okay. Lutz have helped me really get into Nitro. I was okay. an electric guy for six years, and between those two guys, this weekend, if everything goes correct, will be my first weekend. No, second weekend of running Nitro. That's oh, amen. Right That's right. right. You couldn't have a better hand. <laughs> you wish you were some good people. You know what I'm saying? And just yeah, yeah. I, I and and they set me up. They told me what to do. And this is the right. biggest thing about I think about the hobby is the information they give me, I right. give to other people. If yeah. if I see yeah. them at the track struggling, even if it's just a club race, whatever, I try to help as much as I can because I, I've got a bunch coming up through this. I've been doing this about seven years now, and I've mm -hmm. got a bunch of help. So anybody I can help at the track, and it, yep. it don't have to be big, small, whatever. You know, you see somebody struggling, can I help you? A new guy in the hobby. I, I'm all yeah. about that. That's just me. Well, that's, what me. Got of help. that's it. And um, Wayne, don't even, don't even think about your uh, results. Just go out there and have fun. And yeah, just and this is yeah. what's the big thing. I didn't think of my results. I made my cars good, and the results are coming. I know that seems crazy. <laughs> when you don't think about it, they come. Yeah, and just have fun, man. And if anything, just concentrate on just keeping that car, keeping it consistently on the track in between the yeah. pots. You know what I'm saying? Four tires is what I say. Keep it all four. <laughs> <laughs> hey, don't sandbag. Yeah. Hey, don't sandbag. Um, yeah, sandbag. <laughs> don't sandbag. Hey, the biggest thing with me that I can tell people is maintenance, man. You got to maintenance your cars. Okay. I've seen I've seen guys there and yeah. they don't maintenance. I was like, when's the last time you changed your oh, car? Oh, I yeah. think two months ago. What? Right. <laughs> <laughs> Crazy. Yeah, I'm like, you got to change. I can actually, it's so weird that I can tell when my car's diffs are wrong that it, the car reacts different. I can tell when they're wrong or when my shop package is not right. Yeah. And let me see if I can find this full close. Um, it's the best thing I bought for 30 bucks, if I can find it here. I what you got? I'm gonna show you here. Let me find yeah, it. Yeah, the DF It's it's a bit. It's by VRP Pro right here. You, what you got? A DF The best thing I ever bought. The droop the droop gauge. The droop gauge. Yeah, the droop gauge. That's the best thing I ever bought. Really? I, I can stick. <laughs> I can't second that. <laughs> Yeah, back scratchers. Because you know why? My suspension is always right. Okay. Because when your droops off, your car fly. You'll think it's your shocks. Your car yeah. will fly You're left, right. fly right. If these ain't even. Even, yeah. You need to be even, yeah. So it, yeah, so it, all it, the time. I check. You jump straight. That's true. Yeah, and that's and and I I I made a bet with a buddy at the track. He pulled out his um. Trying micro with the the other thing, the 
a lot of people use. Um, Calipers. Like calipers, yeah. I yeah. pulled out that and I said, you want to bet? I said, you go measure <laughs> with your calipers and then I'll put my tool on there and see what happens. This tool won. He lost. <laughs> he was off. Yeah, he was off two millimeters from those calipers. They're not – this thing goes right on the nut and then measures right down to that point. To the point, it yeah. it takes two minutes to do all four. Yeah, it's best to have a it's best to have a tool that's exactly specific made for whatever you're trying to measure or whatever you're trying to you yeah, know. Yeah, I, I mean the when you're in a pinch caliper is a work, but this thing right here, I bought this and it's and I fixed many cars going, Oh, I think I'm right and I'll measure it up and you're off. That you're off and I know it. people think, Oh, it's just a millimeter here or there. That makes a difference. So so Wayne, what's what's the what's, jumps, what's, what's the name of the what's the name of the tool? What's the it's name of it? A VRP Pro uh -huh. droop gauge. Droop gauge, okay. And for mine, I have the the VRP. Let me see if I can pull it in frame. See, this goes for my turnbuckle wrench. Yeah. They make turnbuckle. that too. And okay. mine's associated, I don't know what everybody else, they have a weird size. Uh, Turnbuckles are 5.5. Yeah. So you had to get a different. They're, yeah, I had, had to go, I had to go find one. I'm like, this ain't working. Right. That's what I said. I met you at PMB and I every and I know this guy, the other guy, I don't know what his name is, was talking about 10 minutes there, 10 minutes there. What I try to do is it's more about the experience. So if you can go to different tracks and meet new people, it kind of over with the time that you get on the track. It's, I mean, yeah, it's all about the people. Yeah. It, it oh, is, yeah. You it, talk, 916, yeah. he was just telling about, he was just talking, 916 was just talking about when, um, sometime when you go to tracks and you have just a whole, a long time period to wait before your next qualifier or main. You know what I'm saying? That's when I go socialize. <laughs> Well, I, yeah. I like talking. I'm always picking that's up when, Like that right. be when I met you. Yeah, that's what I did. I went around and just started talking to people, and you won't realize that five hours that you thought you had turned out about two hours. Don't <laughs> like too fast. <laughs> yeah, because I go talk and talk to everybody and kind of, but that's me. Not everybody's like that. Some people yeah. like to have their bubble. I don't have one. I just go. Go and talk. To you. Yeah. <laughs> <Nope>. <laughs> <laughs> that's just me. But yeah, that's the biggest thing is maintenance on these cars. And I'll go through my buddies think I do it too much. But my cars from one weekend to the next, if you go to the track, my yep. car you never see dirty. They never see it dirty. That's it. That's what I, you do. I went to um Harbor Freight and got uh -huh. an air compressor for forty one dollars, forty two dollars. Air compressor is a great investment. That was the best thing I ever bought. The best Let me ask you this. How do you clean your electric cars? I take, actually, this is my best friend right here. I'll show you. Oh, so, I, I disagree. So would you spray that into your ESC and, and motor? I and stuff spray it on top and blow it off, yes. And I have, I'll show you. I got I got an expensive ESC. Had it six years. What kind? I got a Tekken. And they ain't cheap. I promise. Yeah, Tekken. Right. I'm I got Tekken all the way through this car. Hold on a minute. Yeah. I like Tekken Servo. So, but but when you spray WD-40, right, doesn't that leave like a, an oil residue? Nope. Yeah. That's why you blow it off. My case looks brand new. You can see it right there. Hmm. But you're right, though. That's what I was thinking. Because I, I was cleaning them. Because I, I got an electric buggy now. And I was trying to clean it. I was like, damn, how am I going to clean this shit? Is this shit waterproof or, or whatever? <laughs> yeah, and and but, this is the so, other thing that I bought. It's kind of dirty. But let me see if I can get over here. You see what that is? What's that? Your um T? <laughs> let me pull this out. He <laughs> said your T. <laughs> no. that, that's a dark T. No, that's for my bearings. Concentrated. That's for, your, that's for your bearings. Okay. Yeah, that is a that uh um, kind of cleaner. It's a uh, I'm gonna go back here. Catch up here. 
Hold on, I got you. That Look. is that is a like your jewelry cleaner. Yeah. Yeah. Tiny so cleaner, I right? Take yeah. WD forty. I stick my bearings in there and I let them run for like ten minutes with WD forty. And I clean all my bearings that way. And then I take a brush. I have a little brush like this. Move it over here. Mm -hmm. And get all the little fine dirt. And then you buy this. So WD forty. Yeah, I got yeah, I got some of that right there. Yeah. So WD forty. Actually, I've had people do this too. Say you, your car just gets all muddy, and I know pull all, and you pulled all your electronics out. You got your shocks. I've had them spray it down with water. You spray WD forty. It actually soaks the water out of the bearings and everything. It's water dispersal. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Sure. Yep. Yeah, I just, I just said um that bio wash is good too. Um, yeah. Hey, Gunpowder said that he bought a, a Huddy setup station. I was thinking about the same. What do you guys think about that? Mm, I think it's, it's just racing on the road. You don't need it. It's it's no. it's good when you first like you just got you your my you, just, you just got your e buggy right. Yeah, it's I just good. got my e buggy. Yeah, it's good. It's good to set up your car like when you first get it, just to get everything <coughs> go straight. Um, but. Nitro, a lot of like one eighty though. It's like one eighty for the. I know. For the it's a lot of money. Yeah. Right, but with one eight scale, man, we we our stuff get sloppy over time, so it, it's hard to to keep it like brand new. As far as like over, you know, with wear and all that stuff going on, so that that get, the hoodie setup station after the initial first time, man, is is kind of yeah. That's what. Yeah, I it's, kind of, it's kind of not good after that. You know what I'm saying? Because ain't gonna use it that much, right? No. And then, then it's, your stuff develops so much slop over time, wearing. You know what I'm saying? And it's it's hard to get it to be fresh, mm. fresh like it is when you first buy it. That's why, yeah. For the initial setup, your very first setup, then get everything straight. Yeah, but after that, it's you know, it's it's just up to you. You know what I'm saying? I've I've had mine three years and I've used it three times probably. <laughs> Ooh, yeah, but uh, so now, usually I catch somebody that has one at the track, and like he said, they set mine up at PNB and put it on one, and I've not touched it since, and it's still the same. That um, <laughs> he did it at. Um, I'm trying to think who did it. Um, Ooh, it was that, next man. to you, EKJ, when y'all were at the out in that little alley right there. It was the oh. table next to you. He he had a setup. He set up my car, and it was it was it's been good ever since. It was okay, cool. Since P and B, I think that was yeah. Zach. I think that was Zach Thompson and them. Um, no, that, that was um. Well, I don't want to say the white um. Devon. The white around your lips. He's talking about. Uh, he's talking about um. Raja one eleven. No, Devon. Um, it's, that's his real name. There's another, the there's another one there, oh. but he, um, oh, this okay. guy's like out of um, Adrenaline RC Raceway. Is like that sounds like Roger one of them. Okay, it's, it's no, it's another guy that. Uh, okay, okay, yeah, same name, but you, yeah, oh, I know Roger. Yeah, okay, okay, that's just fine. You sound like you were scrapping the beach, but yeah, I just ordered some more of this. Some more bones, okay. okay. <laughs> I'm so everybody, so far, what you say, Corey? Set up, set up, jig or no? Set up, I say no. Like I said, on the initial setup, yeah. If I got it fresh out the box, yeah, I put it on there yeah. just to get everything exactly straight lined up. But after mm -hmm. that, uh, I may use it two or three times after that because I know my friend, my kid is kind of fresh. But over over time, I know it's gonna. It's gone. My bug is gone. My truck is gone. Where it's gonna get slop in the wheels and stuff like that. And you can get some of that out with shimming and stuff like that. But yeah. But other than that, you know, well, I, I wouldn't. You know, I wouldn't spend money on it. You know. Yeah. yeah my when we done our car the first time on one, yeah. we did the same thing. We went to somebody that had one, and he set it up. And you know, you had those little blocks that you got to right. sit under the car. 
Mm-hmm. All right. And it, it said like 30 millimeter. So we set everything to tow. I went down to the setup sheet, one degree this, one degree camber, two degree tow out, two degree negative in the bag, blah, 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 <laughs> put the wheels on, put a battery in it, drop it two or three times on the ground, and every tire was crew. I said, uh, I <laughs> looked at the dude, I said, brother, it, is it me or is something not right? Mm, he, said, right. he said, let's put it back <laughs> on the jet, let's recheck it. So we went through the whole car again, the same, uh, did it again. One degree, two here, one to two degree out, one. All right. It was on, yeah. It, put the tires back on, dropped it again. All the tires are leaning crooked. <laughs> and I kept, so we got to looking at it, and I'm going, no, wait a minute. Let's think about this here. If if we're setting this on this jig at 30 millimeters, it, but then my ride height is like 26, well, ain't no wonder they're crooked. Yeah, they got yeah. Sure. So to, yeah, you to gotta me, go, you gotta go to, with somebody that know what they doing. It didn't seem like it don't seem like he knew what he was doing. You know what I'm saying? But but uh, like I say, it's after that first couple of runs and stuff. You know, everything's gonna loosen up. And well, uh, so one thing, so one thing I did on my techno, what you did? I know when I pulled the push the car backwards, my toe. Uh, like let's say I roll my car backwards, my my uh, camber is is different, and then when I pull the car forward, the camber is different. So that might be because of all the slop that's in the in the car after all the crashes. Right. Um, it might be some when you put on the hoodie station, you have to probably pull it forward to to have everything pull back. Uh, where good. all the slop is taken out, where it's naturally resting when it's driving forward, yeah. that would yeah. be a good time to to do it. Because for me, I, I was tripping. I'm like, yeah, I set my toe. Uh, my my camber, uh, you know, negative two. But when after the, after I was done racing, I noticed my my wear on my tires were totally off. Yeah, they and, are. And, yeah, and uh, you know, the guy was telling me, "Yo, your toes are." I, I just measured this. This, this. this is right, but you know, why is my tires? Because when I roll my car forward and back, it's because of the slop in the car. It it it, it was changing the the camber and the toe. So it was changing the toe and the camber because it was just too much slop. So. Uh, now when I do when I do the camera or try to put the toe, I'll pull yeah. the car, I'll push the car forward, so that way everything is pulled back to its natural resting point uh, right. when when you're driving forward, and then you should try to tune it from there. Yeah, VP, VP, we call that slot wall finesse. <laughs> <laughs> wall finesse. Yeah, yeah. yeah. wall finesse in the chassis. Do that they don't think makes a big difference is balancing your wheels. That's a big difference. To have a balance. I, I looked at when we were at PNB, Ryan and Rob Isaac were doing it, and Ryan was balancing his wheels. We put on his truck, we put on his um, yeah, wheels, it wasn't balanced, put them on the yeah. car. And if you were, the car was doing this, the wheels. Right. Because they were so unbalanced. He went over there and balanced it, put it back on. And it was makes the world a difference. Yeah. Balanced. But it takes some time to do it. I know, but hey, hey it makes the world. Makes What's going on right here? <laughs> yeah. Hey, what's going on in this little uh, chat room right here? What's that? What's that about? Man, I ain't even gonna entertain that. I just let it be. Okay. Oh, well, I, just, I don't know what's. You know, that's why I put it up here. I don't know what's what. So we just gonna. I ain't <laughs> gonna yeah. Yeah. We, we, I'm about to put it up. But um, but yeah um. That's the only thing you got. You got to think about when using those setup stands, man. They, like I yeah. said, initially they're good. What about a, a set of boards? Is much I well, think so. Is always good. <laughs> I think, yeah, I think a setup board is a, is a must have because yeah. Yeah. because you can put it on your table I'm and uh, <laughs> okay, maybe cricket or you might have it on your on your uh, pit mat and it may be bunched up. So you need a, a good flat surface. Yeah. You know what I'm saying to make sure everything is is level and correct. So yeah, I think it's I, I just ordered one. That's why I ordered a chuggy one to do both. Um, what about uh, what about a tire balancer? That was I was on the wall about that last night about trying to order a tire balancer. Uh, yeah, that's what, that's what Wayne just was saying. Yes, that I is think it's, that I is think a it's, game changer. Go ahead, I'm Wayne. Telling you right now, it's a game changer. Um, in my bag, I probably have five rows of clay. Yeah. It takes time, 
but when you get to the track and you squeeze it down that straightaway and it's straight, you know they're balanced. It, yep. It's it's you can go. I can go tell because I've seen cars going down the track like this, and it's not the suspension and it's not the car. It's the actual wheels from being unleveled and you're shaking it down the track. I think it's more critical and truggy than than buggy. You know what I'm saying? Because they're bigger wheels, you know. Yeah, they are. Yeah, more. Yeah, they are. But I, I do it in buggy, and it's. I, I mean, you, you work yeah, on your car, you try to make it correct and true, and then your wheels are unbalanced, and they're doing crazy things, and you're thinking it's the car, and it's not the car; it's actually the wheel. The wheel. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it, it's, it can make, make a out. good setup bad. I know y'all think I'm crazy, but it can make a good setup bad. It can make your car do crazy things, and you're wondering why is it uh, you got everything right, all the camber, all your links, everything done, and you go down the track and it ain't running right. And then you put another set of tires on, and it gets better. It's I've seen it over and over and over. It's, yeah, yeah. to watch. Yeah, it, it's something to... Like I said, it just I know it's definitely more critical in truck. Cause like the last video I did when I you know, I'm breaking in this red um engine. I noticed too in my truck when I gave it gas, it was a whole lot of vibration. Mm -hmm. Um just because, like I said, because like Wayne said, because the wheels are unbalanced or whatever. So like they I said, it's way more critical in that in truggy than than buggy, but mm -hmm. It's good. To I, I it try to get every advantage I can. Yeah, <laughs> I understand. Hey, it, it might not seem much, but to me, I feel like more comfortable, and I feel like the car with that that I do that that it, you know, I mean, it's it, and a lot of this is confidence. The more that you run good, and the confidence comes up, the better you feel, and you drive the car better. I mean, it's. People don't think that, but it is confidence. You can be down with the car. The car ain't doing nothing. You, you don't like the hobby. Yeah. That's what that's having confidence in your setup. Mm -hmm. and like Wayne said at the beginning, the main <clears throat> the maintenance is, is the most important thing. It's it's the thing that really gonna you can win your race with, with doing your maintenance. You know what I'm saying? You can't you don't have to be the best driver, but if you got good maintenance and your car gonna last. And you comforted in your car, that's 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 yeah. half the race right there. For real. Especially in like in the sportsman, in the open class. If you got a good solid car and you know your car is doing good and the setup correct, you good to go. Yeah. Yeah. And that's the thing with mine now. It doesn't matter where I go, it's on tires. If the tires are wrong, the car tells. Oh the yeah, car's gonna, right. when yes. the car's right, when the tires are right, the car's on. I can yeah. tell. Tires, tires are really like eighty-five to ninety percent. Oh, yeah, yeah. And no, you, you, you ain't even got to run a whole lap. You run a half a lap, and you'll be able to tell. Tires you know, right. right off the bat, you're right. Yeah, and it lets you know quick too. You know, so. But yeah, if you do your maintenance and you're on the right tire, you good. You in there? Yeah, you good, you, you yeah, do, yeah, you got a good chance to do very right. well. Yeah. Saturday, it didn't even look the same, but that's that guy was talking about WD 40 and and blowing it off. It worked like when I get to my electronic servos, I just kind of yeah. missed it. I don't like drench it, I right. missed it over the electronics and blow it off. But any it's on it. the arms, the bearings, the out drives, it gets soaked, and then yeah. I blow it off. And then if there's extra clumpy dirt, I just kind of rub it off and take it. And baby wipes are your best friend. He's doing the do in the background. <laughs> what is it? He doing that guy. He doing the do in the background. Yeah, blue crab. Yeah, blue crab getting it done over there. But yeah, fellas, man, I ain't gonna hold y'all. I ain't gonna hold y'all all night, man. But like I said, hold on, Corey. I got a bone to pick with you before you go. What's up? On your video, you were talking about the servos, and you said that Stabox didn't have the all metal cases. That ain't true. For how much? I feel like, I feel like you're picking on my, my, my servos there. <laughs> <laughs> Blue crap, how, how much are the metal case 
So about yeah, this one right here is about a hundred and fifty something dollars, probably. But the two things are one hundred and seventy dollars a pair. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. So these high tech, which are all aluminum, are about one hundred and sixty a pair. Blue I mean, they're expensive. Like don't get me wrong; they're expensive, but they got them. Yeah, high tech. I run a high tech in my electric, and that thing's quick. Blue crap. Okay. Mine. <laughs> <laughs> I just gave you a hard time. No, no, no. I don't have to turn down my fast. speed. It's, it's already slow. <laughs> you know, I don't have to turn down my speed. Fast. You know, some people say turn down the speed. Really I don't even got to turn it. They perfect. They stay already really slow. Right. <laughs> I love my safe box, man. But yeah, <laughs> man. But hey. I appreciate you having me. I've had bad stuff with safe box, though. I had one I had less than two days. And it did, it just, I didn't do anything wrong, went out, sent it to them. They kept it, never sent me anything back. Ooh. $30, yep. That's I've great. never heard anybody say anything bad. I know the customer yeah. service has been good. No. You got to have an RMA number or something. Oh. Huh. I, yeah. yeah. I called them, had the receipt and everything, and it been was pretty something in the wire or something got cut. They wouldn't replace it. And it was, uh, I had it, I already yeah. had one race. Too much money. That's crazy, yeah. Cause Too much money. I don't have one. I don't have, yeah, I don't have a sir, sir box that went bad on me, you know, prematurely. They're usually real good. They, I send it to them. A lot they, of them, no, they don't really want to check. They just send you, they send you a new one right on out. Most yeah. of them, huh? yeah. But you can get my servos forever. But since I've been running these sending servos, and I can get two metal aluminum case sending servos <laughs> for what? Blue crap playing paying for one. I know. Yeah, I'm, I'm just giving you a hard time. Those sending servos are super nice. I, I, they I, are I, nice. Yeah, I, they ended up, I got one for my throttle, and it's, nice. it's really sweet. I just give you a hard time. <laughs> how much, is, how much is your servo for? Um, the send was how much, you get, how much is your servo? You can get two aluminum cases, one point, what, what, one point eight. Point eight, point oh eight speed for like two, for like one fifteen, one twenty for two aluminum case. For two of them, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah I shut up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for two, I get for one two. for that. Yeah, I was about to say me too. Yeah, you, then you can go get the top of the line, the six two sixes, uh, for two for like um. How much, what's the torque though? About five hundred ounces. That's on a yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. send it RCs between four and five hundred ounces. Yeah. Yeah. And they're Dang. quick. I got them. And that's, and that's not even that's not even the, the the um top of the line one. The top of the line one is like five fifty to six hundred ounces of torque with uh, pretty much the same speed. Point zero with um point um yeah zero point eight speed for like I think that's probably gonna be like. One fifty for two, something like that. One two, one fifty for two, something like that. Top we of the line. Pro, we run the protec, and it's a lot. Yeah, the protec is it's over one six hundred ounces, and it's one fifty nine. All right, y'all gotta go. I'll talk to y'all later. All right, brother. I'm out too. All right, later. Hey man, we, yeah, I'm gonna shut it. Yeah, I'm gonna shut it down anyway, y'all. Like I said, I'll keep everybody all, right. all night. Thanks like for having us. Bro, I appreciate all of y'all, and I appreciate it, man. And I thank y'all for coming in, just sitting down, spending your time with me, talking with me. I appreciate it. Fat Daddy and Wayne R.C., Blue Crab. Man. Yeah, man. I appreciate it, y'all. But yeah, right, before, we go, before we go, Corey, let me give a, a birthday shout-out to my airbrush guy in Texas, uh, Andy Bergman. Okay. He is a bonsai custom R.C. bodies. Yeah. And a uh, good killer dude, man. He does some good work. Go check him out. He got a Facebook page, Bonsai. It's Bonsai Custom RC Bodies. Cool. Okay. That's what's and, up. Good dude, Andy Bergman. He kill, yeah. Killer dude, killer painter. Yeah. And uh, birthday this weekend, and I just want to give him a shout out. Uh, killer dude. He's done a couple of our local guys, uh, Greg Trotz Bodies, mine. He done one for the hammer. Okay. Uh, seemed like John Jennings got one from him. Yeah. A couple, couple of guys at the warehouse have used him. And he killer on the price and, and, and the job. He, go look at his page. You'll see. What's his name again? Bonsai Custom RC Bodies. It's 
B A N Z A I Bonsai. Well, I right, Bonsai have a birthday, Mister. What's his first? What's his name? What's his name? His name is Andy. Yeah, his name is Andy Bergman. Okay, have a birthday, Andy, and um, y'all go check out Bonsai. What is it? Yeah, Bonsai Custom RC Bodies. Bonsai Custom RC Bodies by Andy, and happy birthday, Andy, and by hey, Andy Bergman. Yeah, and um. We out. All right, now, Fat Dad. I see you. Yes, sir. See you later, brother. All right, now.